Do you get many tips from the community about uh, uh, drug use and drug, yeah. drug issues? Yeah, we get a lot. Of, you know, we get a lot of calls for a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, it, it goes both sides of the fence. Some of it's legitimate. Some of it's suspected. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of people uh, see what they think may be a drug deal going down in front of their house, and it may very well be. Um, they'll call the police, and mm -hmm. you know, we'll get there. And sometimes we can verify that in fact what they saw wasn't. Uh, it was a couple of people just talking, maybe exchanging some items that weren't drugs, or in fact, mm -hmm. we can't verify it because people moved on. Um, sometimes people give us information, they'll provide a license plate uh, vehicle description, mm -hmm. and we'd already know that individual, and we know them maybe to be involved in drug trafficking. It helps with our investigations to know where they were and what they saw, so we encourage any information. Mm -hmm. Um, we, you know, I just ask people, don't be discouraged if it appears as if nothing's being done with it, because I can guarantee you there is something. Mm. It is going into the system. Everything we get goes into um, the system so the detectives can evaluate its, its and apply weight to it in mm. the enforcement end. Um, are there successful community programs around to help with um, dealing with the drug issue? Well, I... We, we actually have what I think is is the core for a successful community program here. Um, a lot of what we do, you know, one of the uh, criticisms I've heard lately is we don't make a lot of arrests mm -hmm. for drugs. And, well, there's several reasons for that. One is it is a close-knit community. It's very difficult to get undercover officers into a close-knit mm -hmm. community to make buys. Um, face it, most of the people in the community aren't going to sell to us. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they know that would be a bad thing for them to do. Um, we do work with undercover agents mm -hmm. from the DEA and from the um, Cape Cod Task Force that we're part of. Um, so there are some active investigations going on that do involve undercover mm -hmm. um, people. But where we've been very successful is working with organizations on the island like ASAP, um, the Alliance for mm -hmm. Substance Abuse and Prevention, who sponsor and support organizations like Narcotics Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous, um, the NBHS, the, the Nant Nantucket Behavioral Health Services, has the drug um, program. Unfortunately, it's limited by funding to, I think, 40 participants or something like that, which they're always full. Um, so, you know, that's where the funding really needs to go is to things like that because many of these addicts want, don't want to be addicts. Mm -hmm. They want to be productive members of society. They don't want to be drug dealers. They don't want to be drug users. But there's no adult help for them mm -hmm. readily available on the island that that is apparent to them so so we've been working with a lot of these organizations directing people towards narcotics anonymous for mm -hmm. instance there's a tremendous support network here in the island for people who can find their way into that program mm -hmm. it's it's getting into it and finding out about it that's mm -hmm. the problem and so we've been working with that who um, runs narcotics anonymous on the island um or it, can you say i, I really can't, you can't say, say it. it's yeah, uh it's, it's a it, network of, of uh, people who who have had some exposure experience. How do people? Because I mean, you see about AA meetings. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anything about narcotics, narcotics anonymous. anonymous meetings. It, it works the same way. Yeah, but yeah. Our, I mean, how do you find? How does somebody find out about it? Well, generally, that's the problem. Yeah. Um, generally, through um, a counseling service like NBHS, mm -hmm. um, through the schools, mm -hmm. um, they have uh, access to it. The, the, uh, do the, does the, the hospital refer the people? The hospital, the physicians, yeah. um, the police department. Mm -hmm. uh, we all do it. It. We need to word out more. Um, about this mm -hmm. and you know I, I can't say enough about how beneficial they are for the community mm -hmm. um, we just got to get people out there and unfortunately the people that need it we're not always able to reach right. um, you know we got people who again this transient workforce mm -hmm. you know they come over they wake up they they use a little bit of the narcotics mm -hmm. to get themselves started for the day by noon they're they're having a problem. Mm -hmm. um, they use a little bit more, and then they really hit it that night, you know, because then they're really shaken mm -hmm. by the end. And, and, you know, we don't even know about these people. The mm -hmm. employers are the ones who see them. They're the ones who notice that they're tired today or they're not very productive mm -hmm. or they're edgy, you mm -hmm. know. And, you know, so we need to get the word to everybody who, who has a, a stake in this um, to say there is help out there. You have any estimate other than alcohol? Mm -hmm. uh, any estimate of how many drug users there are no, on the island? No idea. No idea. I, I think the Did you hazard a guess. I couldn't even. I couldn't even hazard a guess. You know, it's it. It's very prevalent in the in the sense that. Um, we, you know, the, the drug of choice that we seem to see right mm -hmm. now on the island is is prescription narcotics. Mm -hmm. 
and those are very prevalent. And you know, people don't always start. They don't out. get them with prescriptions. They buy them well, from people. Some do. Some do. Um, but- some do for legitimate purposes. Right. I mean, a lot of these people. You know, nobody wakes up today and says, "I'm going to become an addict." That's that just doesn't happen. Right. What happens is there's different ways. You know, they they may go out and start. Uh, drinking with a few friends, you know, after work and say, hey, you know, just try this, you know, mm-hmm. and they do it a couple of times. Yeah, doesn't hurt anything. Yeah. After a while, you know, it, it builds up right. and then pretty soon it does help. Mm-hmm. It takes time, mm-hmm. but it does. Um, you know, a lot of kids, why do they kids turn to uh, prescription narcotics? Because they're available in their homes. Some people go to the doctor because they legitimately have an injury or something. They get these drugs and that gets them hooked. Is it a serious um, problem in the schools? Not in the schools. Uh, I think it's I think it's overrated. I think the problem is over overstated in the schools. Mm-hmm. I think it is a problem. If you got one kid, it's a problem. That it's a problem. Yeah. But you know, you know, I have family in the schools mm-hmm. or kids in the school. Mm-hmm. Many of my officers have kids in school. We hear things. Um, the school is very very vigilant about this. Mm-hmm. They've got staff that's trained to deal with these types of mm-hmm. problems. And when they see it, you know, they address it. They work with the mm-hmm. Nantucket Behavioral Health Services. Um, they work with us. Um, we get school resource officers mm-hmm. there. So, you know, I, I hear people tell me that drugs are rampant in the school, and I, I, I don't believe them. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there are some. There are kids who do smoke some marijuana. Um, but, you know, the message out there is it's okay. Um, that's what the community or the state and everybody's telling them. So, sure, some are going to try it. There are some who drink alcoholic beverages. I'm guessing many of their parents probably drink mm-hmm. alcoholic mm-hmm. beverages. And there are some who abuse prescription drugs. Um, we're giving kids prescription drugs that are potential for abuse, Ritalin, mm-hmm. Adderall, things like that, all the time. And, uh, you know, a doctor gives it to them. Why shouldn't they abuse it? So there's always going to be some, but I don't think it's a great number. What should a parent do if they are concerned about their child? Well, a parent's going to be the first one to notice, mm-hmm. okay? And it, it, it's not going to be the police. It's not going to be anybody else. It's going to be a parent. You're going to have a kid that you know from growing up what their activity levels like. You start mm-hmm. seeing their activity decline, their grades decline, their interest in things declining. Um, they're sleeping more for no apparent mm-hmm. reason. I mean, you know, I got a 14 year old teenager. You know, he likes to sleep till noon. Mm-hmm. Okay, but I know why. I, I know, know why. why. <laughs> yeah, because he's up till you know midnight. Yeah, right. um, and things like that. But. Uh, um, what when you start seeing this stuff you've got to talk to somebody you've got to talk and the school's a perfect place to start they have counselors at the school who can help you um identify this and that might give them the attention they need to pay to see if the kid is um you know showing some of the signs and they can get help so you'd recommend a parent go to the school first before trying to deal with it with their kid directly? Well, I think you can deal with it directly as, yeah. as a parent. But unfortunately, what we see is, is many of these parents have problems themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're concerned about their kids, but they're not, uh, they're not equipped mm-hmm. to be able to deal with the addiction. Mm-hmm. Um, so hopefully they can get some help from somebody who can. All right, quickly to change the subject. Mm-hmm. Um, you getting ready for summer? How many summer officers well, do you have coming this year? We'll bring on 32. Mm-hmm. Um, is that the same number as last same year? Same number as last couple of years, mm-hmm. yeah. The idea is is that by the, by the time we get them onto the street in July, uh, 1st of July, um, that we'll have at least 30 left um, after the training. Mm-hmm. And uh, then um, things will start moving. Now we're... we're Kind of, a, we're, we're at full staff for full-time mm-hmm. police officers right now, but we won't have full staff during the summer because several of them are going to be going away to the mm-hmm. academy in the mm-hmm. summer. So we'll be down three or four. But I think with our new reserve officer program that we've been doing the last couple of years, we make up for that a little bit. You have the same uh, show of force, if you will, on the Fourth of July weekend this year. We're That's actually it. starting our planning process mm-hmm. with that. There will be. Um, it, it's different this year because of the timing mm-hmm. of the Fourth of July. Um, but we are working with the state police again. Um, they are going to provide us some support, mm-hmm. and uh, we're going to we're going to definitely be looking at the problem areas again and, and mm-hmm. paying attention. So, you know, we just ask people to plan ahead and uh, don't don't be abusive mm-hmm. um, to our beaches, and everything will be just like it was last year. It'll be just fine. Good. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Chief Pittman. It's okay. great to have you. I'm, Thanks, I'm Dan. Talking about a an issue on the, on the drug side that is really important. To